I know there's been lots of video game movies out there, and so many of them have been getting this. And, well, now there's this one film that's been getting this like crazy. And that's on a game that's become a favorite of mine, Borderlands, now playing in theaters. But is this adaptation of the popular first-person shooter game really deserve the hate? Or am I going to have to put the here blooming guns down if I had some from the games and give this film some good old-fashioned Big D justice. Well, you know what? I'm going to say this and I'll before, and I'll say again. You guys are dissing this too much, but I've said this once, I'll say it again. That's going to change. Get ready as I bring to you a spoiler for review of Borderlands as I defend this film right now. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dual, better known to as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you a spoiler-free review of the just now released sci-fi action comedy flick Borderlands, released by Lionsgate. Directed by Eli Roth, who co-wrote the story with Joe Crombie. And wrote the story by himself, Eli Roth did. The game is, of course, based on the hit video game series, which, as a matter of fact, is celebrating its 15th anniversary this year. Which, was, which of course, were developed by Gearbox Software and published by 2K. The film stars Kate Blanchett, along with a big ensemble cast that includes Kevin Hart, Jack Black, Edgar Ramirez, Ariana Greenblatt, Florian Montenu, Gia Gershon, and Jamie Lee Curtis. This, this has been, uh, well, well, in the works for almost a decade, and what have you. With Ari and Avi and Avi Arad, of course, you know, who, of course, who, of course, was well known for working at, Mar who, well, actually still is working with Marvel, producing. And originally, they wanted Lee Wynnell, who worked on Saw, but, well, just left. Actually, yeah. Apparently, they had Tim Miller work on a couple of weeks of reshoots after, after it had finished filming due to Eli Roth's commitments to last year's hit horror flick Thanksgiving. This film's been getting disliked crazy. This has a flipping low score. This has a low score than Street Fighter, which I have yet to review that film, but I will eventually. I'm not too thrilled with that. Well, now I just going to give you a wee bit of how the story starts out. On the planet of Pandora, Roland, a mercenary soldier apparently gone rogue, kidnaps teenager Tiny Tina with the help of Creek, a psycho, who of course everybody knows that's one of the big baddies from Borderlands. If you've played the video games like I have, who was institutionalized in the same facility. And meanwhile, on another planet, Bounty Hunter Lilith is contacted by Atlas, a powerful corporal magnet. He convinces her to rescue Tina, his daughter. Lilith returns to Pandora, which is our home planet for the first time since she was a child, with the help of a robot that was mysteriously programmed to wait for her on Pandora, known as Claptrap. She locates Tina, and, well... After realizing that Atlas wants to start back against her will, Lilith teams up with Rowan Creek when they're attacked by the Crimson Lance, the private army of Atlas. And then, of course, they meet others along the way, including Dr. Patricia Tannis. Anyway, who helps them? But that's all the story I will give to you. I will give you no more of this story. This is strictly Hush Hush. If you are a big fan of this ser series, or if you're into maybe, well... Um, films with ragtag teams like um, The Suicide Squad, then I'd say this is a film for you. But if not, then I'd say just skip it. 
or wait for it to come to physical media or stars, which of course that's that channel actually currently airs Lionsgate films because since they're owned by Lionsgate. Now then, my thoughts on Borderlands is if you didn't see my Althea reaction, the second one I did after doing Harold and the Purple Crayon a week ago, I thought I'd do it again. That's what I'm going to do from now on because I saw after my Althea reaction for that film and review did so well, I thought I'd try it again. And I'm going to hope for the best that this will work for um, this and what have you. But on Rotten Tomatoes, this has a measly 10%. What the hairy heck's with that? Believe me, that's 1% less than Street Fighter from 1994, which, as I've said already, I will review that. That's even, And it's even more lower than the uh, live-action Super Mario Bros. movie. I'm thinking, what's up with that? I'm not too impressed with Samus for giving a D plus, come on, get some brains, you guys. I think the way I see it, oh, uh, and I'm all right, actually, okay, with Mad Craig having it at 27%, which was okay, but still not great. Post Track has a 46% score, with 31% saying they would definitely recommend it. Uh, I'm going to put this AR away. The Guardian called the film a janky, juvenile, and derivative adaptation. Variety found it was a generic game adaptation that deprives audiences of the most valuable ingredient of its source. Surprise! Uh, the, the only good reviews I've found, MovieWeb said, Rock displays a cinematic prowess with solid combat scenes, and the character of Creek is a beast and a half, twisting bays in the human pretzels with unabashed glee. The violence is real, but not graphically disturbing. The review insists it's stunning to see a rock film without even a hint of blood. The producers made a business calculation to avoid the R rating and allow children who also enjoy the game to see the film. Die hard rock, thing, rock fans expect this trademark gruesome torture should sit this one out. Yes, I do agree and what have you. I feel like this could have gotten an R rating itself. Now, if you play the Borderlands games, they are rated in for mature. But not if you, not if you change the, if you t set it on, well, the blood and what have you. But you still get the language, though. Given the fact this is a PG-13 rated film, which makes it Eli Roth's second film to get well, second non-R-rated film after The House with a Clock in Its Walls a few years back, which, of course, Jack Black was also in, by the way, but I'll get to him in a little bit. Um, yeah. I will say, yeah, it... But even so, but I like the action sequences, though, but it was pretty good. I just wish it could have just had a little, a wee bit of blood and what have you, but, oh, well, nobody's perfect. Another thing, I will say, it is a shame we don't get to see other characters from the game. Now, we do get brief appearances from characters like Scooter and Ellie. And, well, now we do get to see characters like Moxie and Marcus and what have you, who I'll get to, I'll talk about them in a little bit. It's just a shame we don't get um, some of the other characters we see at first, like, uh, let's see, you know, like um, Mordecai and Brick. Yeah, that would have been pretty fun, what have you. But... However, I just enjoyed this film. It was a blast. It had tons of fun moments and what have you. I, I feel like I was the only person in the theater to actually get a good laugh and what have you. I wouldn't put it any other way. Steve Jablonski did the score for the film, and I must admit he did pretty good. Now, however, for the cast, we have Kate Blanchett, who I've had found out is the only person to get respected while I have you playing Lilith. And I must say, she does a pretty darn good job uh, on the character. Now, Kevin Hart playing Roland, well, I wasn't too sure if I would be thrilled with his performance. He was pretty, he was fine and what have you. Not as good and big and, well, you know, if you play the games, you know what Roland is, you know. Now, um, Ariana Greenblatt, 
play the role of Tiny Tina. Of course, you may be know, know I'm Greenblatt from the former Disney Channel series, Stuck in the Mill. And, of course, she also appeared in several other films, including A Bad Mom's Christmas and Avengers Infinity War. She recently appeared in films last year, including 65 and Barbie. She's currently to do. She's currently due to appear in the newest Fear Street film that's in her post production. So I'm looking forward to that. So anyway, yeah, I must say Green Black does one hell of a job as that character. She really is funny. Um, Gina Gershon played Moxie. I thought she did pretty good. Jamie Lee Curtis as Dr. Patricia Tance. Well, not bad. Pretty good. But the big one goes to Jack Black as the voice of Claptrap. I mean, as much as he did a good job with Bowser in the Super Mario Bros. movie last year, he has one hell of a job in voice of Claptrap. He's absolutely bonkers, zany, hysterical, etc., 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 etc. Oh no, I'm sorry, I'm getting carried away here. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I couldn't help myself. Now, we did get to see um, appearances from several other characters. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, um, there's Crom, who was played by Oliver Richters. Yeah, I remember that character from the first game. Um, Commander Knox, I think I remember that character. I think that character was in um, Borderlands 3, as a matter of fact. Yeah. At least, I think. Um, let's see. Now, and we, I did like Marcus played by Benjamin Byron Davis. I must say, this guy does great on this character, and he even sounds like Marcus, just like in the video games. So, yeah, and if you're thinking you're not satisfied, then I say, if you want your money back, you better watch it. No refunds, as Marcus's catchphrase says. And um, Edgar Ramirez is Atlas, which brings me to another issue I've got with this film. This guy's the villain in Why Have You, and eh, he's okay in Why Have You. Not a good villain by any means. I wish I could have had someone better, like uh, Commander Steel, who was the main antagonist of the, of the first game. Or better yet, they could have had Handsome Jack, for crying out loud. Now, that was a good Borderlands villain, but they would have had to make a film, make a film R-rated, you know. You know, this guy was absolutely crazy. Seriously. <sighs> I'm sorry, but that those are my only issues. Kind of missing a few good characters in my view. Um, that guy was, eh. And I just wish it could have had just a wee bit of blood, even for a PG-13 film. So overall, I found Borderlands to be pretty fun and enjoyable. I'd only recommend this if you're a fan of the video games or if you're into films with ragtag teams, you know. Okay, kind of like the Suicide Squad, as I've said already. So Borderlands is worth looking into. And to critics, sorry to disappoint you, but you snooze, you lose. From my score, I'm giving Borderlands 4... And a half stars. On a scale of 1 to 10, I give it a 9. Sorry. But again, you snooze, you lose. So, I'll only take good good comments on Borderlands. So, what did you think of the film? Just don't leave too much. I'll, I will let you leave um, some stuff you didn't like. But just don't be completely, completely negative. Or else I'm going to have to have your I'm gonna have to have your comment removed immediately. Or blocked them. Or whatever I, the hairy heck you have to do. Sorry. Uh, this is my channel and I just don't want to be rude to any of you nice people on here, okay? Good, enough said. So what did you think of Borderlands? Did you like it or did you hate it? Let me know if, if you wish. Leave it for me in the comment section. If you liked the video, click the like button. Subscribe and be a part of the Big D Nation. Continue to help support my channel. Make it grow. Make the views grow. Next time, you're finally going to get my July rewatches ranking. So, if you like this, you may want to check out my reviews for some of these other video game films. 
In the upper left-hand corner is my review of the Super Mario Brothers movie. No, not last year's film, the film from 1993. The upper right-hand corner is my review of the new, the recent Mortal Kombat film from 2021. Or if you like, um, maybe a film that really is bad and what have you, and I know a lot of people don't like it, well... Check out my review for a film that really got a ton of dissing, and it's Max Steel, uh, which is a super, well, a factual superhero flick. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.